All right. Hello, everyone. Again, this is Ethan Shapiro, the climate change realtor, founder and manager of the most innovative real estate sales company ever conceptualized here for Principles, episode 16. I'm filming this this morning, so you guys are getting the day of. It's it's not live, but like it kind of is because I always do it in one take. And moving forward, uh, once we get to how to win friends and influence people, I'm working on getting a more organized um, format. But it's still going to be very like genuine and raw because that's what I'm going with here. We got big changes coming to this channel over time. We're just at the beginning here. But we left off at 5.3. So here we go. Synthesize the situation through time, collect data, and analyze over time. As far as having success in a company, I think that's probably the biggest piece of advice you could possibly get to achieve. Assuming you're you're willing to, to never give up and always keep going, let's read it again. Synthesize the situation through time, and then here's the key, collect data. How many doors, how many people answer, how many sales do I get from people answering and analyze over time. So when you're doing something over and over, doing similar things over and over again and you're collecting information, it took me three hours to do it this time. It took me two hours to do it this time. I had this result. This many people smiled at me. This many people frowned at me. Now you might think that, oh, you can't measure something like that, but really Data is everything in business. Data is the new, the new gold. You know, the, the, the data, the buying and spending habits of Americans is what corporations pay literally millions of dollars to companies like Facebook and Google for. It is the, the commodity of the future. So when you, if you can analyze, if you can c create your company and then analyze your progress and figure out, oh, if I just tweak this, like for example, if I go out um, from three to five, Thirty-eight percent of people answer. If I go out from three thirty to five thirty, forty-four percent people answer. That's so much less time wasted because more people are answering, so you're getting more conversion. But that's just I, I'm. I think the whole key to business is collecting data, analyzing, and then improving based on your analysis. That that's what it is. Um. So let, letter A. Keep in mind both the rates of change and the levels of things and the relationships between them. The levels of things. Um, so I have a note underneath everything important in life needs to be a trajectory, be on a trajectory to be above the bar and headed towards excellence. So I, I agree with that. That's, that's pretty fair. So that's interesting. That's pretty fair. So, um, rate of change and levels of things. I don't know what he means by like levels of things, but, um, Things, things do change and you have to be be aware of that and you have to see how how fast things are changing. Like, I don't know, I'll give you like how many people are using Redfin uh, discount brokers instead of like realtors. Like that's something I should be aware of because if more and more people are starting to use this discount broker model, you know, I might want to consider lowering my commissions or something. So, and then levels of things is, I don't know, that could be inventory of how many houses are on the market. But generally speaking, this is under, this is under five, three, which is the collect data and analyze thing. I think it's very important to, um, to track everything. All successful businesses track everything they do, because then you can look back in a year and be like, wow, we were, we were getting these numbers when we wanted these numbers. And then, and then we can like look at it and be like, oh, it's probably because we were, uh, I can only relate it to myself, like door knocking at the wrong time or like saying the wrong things. It's like, oh, wow. As soon as we started saying this script, everyone started buying from us, you know? So let's keep going here. I love this book. Um, be imprecise. Whatever that means. There's a note underneath. By and large, it is the level at which you need to understand most things in order to have the most effective decisions. Right, right, right. So this is like, like he said, don't over squeeze dots in the last one. It's good to have all this data, but you don't want to like look at every single little piece of data and be like, oh, I, I need to make sure this percentage is up and this percentage is up. If I don't do that, like you can get like analysis paralysis, you know what I'm saying? Where you're like looking at stuff way, way too much. And yeah, so he said by and large, he's like, understand everything a little bit. 
And then I do believe that being specialized is what will set you apart from most people and make you uh, successful. Is ha- find your niche, find your skill set that really works for you. Maybe for me, I think it's communication and connecting with people on an emotional level. For other people, it might be crutching numbers. And for other people, it might just be straight hustle. Like you can, you can door knock for 12 hours a day, five days a week. Like if you can do that, like I don't stand a chance really against you because you can, you can knock on every door in Boulder, Longmont, Lafayette and Superior before I'll even finish Boulder. And every single person in town, every single person in the whole county will know who you are. So, and then for example, and other people are, are better with like editing videos or other people are better with like targeted ads. So, but then again, if you do all of it and you have a broad understanding of everything and you focus on your your special skill set, you, you'll do well. But Ray, Ray saying like you can't try and be imprecise. Like you can't try and do every single thing perfectly, or you're just gonna you're gonna burn out because everyone has different skill sets, right? Everyone has different things that they're good at. So um, here's another note underneath in quotes. So we got notes today. Um, when you ask someone whether something is true true and they tell you it's not totally true it's probably by and large true whatever that means i mean what is what is true anyways i'm not going to get into like the objectivism argument here today but hard to say let her see remember the 80 20 rule and know what the key 20 percent is right so here's here's leaning into this idea um that certain activities are going to get you your your um your desired result right so instead of me like spending all my time making YouTube videos where it reaches like 10 people a week, I can just go straight to the doors and meet people. And some people be like, Oh, you haven't gotten any sales or like how how you've knocked on thousands of doors and you've only had like four sales. Like you sure that's the right thing to do, but it's, it's all about your vision, right? It's about what you're trying to do and and having that long-term oriented lens. So, but it is every every day and that key from collecting data and seeing what your conversion rates are, you can figure out what your, what activities are um, working most effectively. So I'm finding that certain demographic groups are, are are more appealed to my, um, my mission, my vision, my, my values, like obviously climate scientists will be more interested in climate change realty than someone who's like conservative and doesn't believe that climate change is real. So that would be the 80% where if I'm talking to a climate change denier, like I do love talking to people with different ideas, but at the same time, like, is that person really going to build the business up? So the overview of the 80, the Pareto principle is the idea that most it's like 80% of your results will come from 20% of your actions, right? So that, that, and then the 80%, that other 80% of your actions will result in 20% of your results. So every day you want to try and move closer and closer to that 20%. So like, instead of working hard, you're working smart. So that, that example of that guy who can door knock for 12 hours a day, like if that's his 20% and he's getting deals like every day, then that's his 20%. But if maybe he would be better at cold calling or better at something else, I'm trying to relate it to the real estate thing, but it's hard. But, um, that's one of the most important things in life is because you can spend all your time like taking notes and writing stuff. But like if you're not getting value from what you're doing, you're, you're in that 80% where you're only going to get a little bit of results. Whereas if you're doing something else, targeted actions, and you can find out what is that 20% from analyzing all your activity tracking. How much time am I spending doing this? How much results am I getting from that? Um, how much time did it take compared to like how experienced I am now? And you really, and you all really successful people lean into their strengths, right? And they have people to help them with their weaknesses. But this 80, 20 principle is something you should always be considering because if you want to be spending your time appropriately, um, be an imperfectionist, that, that's what Ray says. So let's make this video shorter this week. Let's make it like 10 minutes. Um, being imperfectionist, right? So he was talking about being imprecise, being an imperfectionist. You don't want to be too caught up in the details because then you're spending, if, you know, let's say you're going to get 80% of the people from what you did, but you want to, but you want to make it perfect. You want to get a hundred percent of the people. So you, you're racking your brain. How can I fix this, this advertisement that I've made? It's like, Oh, the, there's a little dot in the corner from the printer. It's like, Oh no, I have to redo the whole thing. And you spend another hour. That little dot might turn off like two people out of the 100 people you're going to send the advertisement to, but you're so, you're such a perfectionist that you really want to get it perfect. So you go in and you do all this stuff and it takes you another hour and finally get rid of this little dot that was on your advertisement because I'm thinking of print advertising because that's what I do. 
But um, stuff like that. And then the cool thing about being an imperfectionist is that whatever you're bad at, you need a team, you know? Like I'm here on my own still right now, but I'm so looking forward to having like team members and people who will assist me with what I'm doing because um, th they will be really good at the things I'm not. And I talk about this all the time. Like anyone who's trying to accomplish something, even for yourself, First off, I think you should you should you should just find someone and, and make sure both of you succeed because I think you'll both do do better. But this idea of of being an imperfectionist, do the you know the eighty twenty, do the stuff that you're good at, and get help with the stuff you're not. You know, you 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 can't be perfect. And being a perfectionist, I think, holds a lot of people back because they won't put out what they've created because they're worried about the what's wrong with it. Just accept everything in or not everything in life. Every it's an iterative process, which means you're always continually improving and getting better and better and better. I talk about that all the time, and that was principles episode 17, a day of recording because I took a day off on Saturday, but um Looks like we're getting to the end of principles here. Yeah, we'll be done in a couple episodes. We'll get on to how to win friends and influence people. I'm going to try and keep the videos, I think, around 10 minutes here soon. That's like the magical algorithm number and more of the digestible, maybe five minute videos. Who knows? And we're going to, we're going to, we're, we're, we're getting you guys. You're, you're going to be watching this. We're going to be learning and growing together and philosophizing and businessizing and all the words and not speaking like an intelligent person, speaking like who I truly am, a young 23 year old. Not super smart, but super dedicated hustler. So everyone have a fantastic day. Stay positive. Stay frosty. Love you all. And we'll see you on Thursday for the podcast and on Saturday for the vlog 2012.